This past weekend, I needed to run a couple of errands, so I decided to head downtown. So I get into my 1999 white Volkswagen Jetta. Not a glamorous car by any means, but it got my sister through college, and now I had the pleasure of it helping me get through college. So I get in my Jetta, and I'm driving downtown. I get to a stoplight at Adams and Figueroa, and on my right-hand side, I can hear this car coming. It sounds like a factory on wheels, and I turn, and it's this 1978 Cadillac that clearly had seen better days. It had rust stains all over it. It looked like one day it had been painted lime green, not really anymore, but to complement it perfectly, it had shiny spinning hubcaps, music blaring. It was a sight. And so when I see it pull up on my right-hand side, I can't help but chuckle a little bit. And the driver and I make eye contact, we nod, and drive off as the light turns green. A couple blocks later, I get to another stoplight. This time, instead of seeing, well, rather hearing, that lovely Cadillac pull up, I see a brand new 2013 BMW. Looks like it just came off the dealer's lot. And as I look over, I can see my reflection in the shiny black side panel. And I don't even wait to make eye contact with this driver because, if I'm honest, I wasn't feeling so hot in my Jetta anymore. Why is it that the feelings about my own vehicle changed drastically within a matter of minutes? It was because my confidence was directly linked to my subject of comparison. And I realized after this experience that I'm guilty of not only comparing my car, but also myself to others in various situations because of some unconscious belief that by doing so, I'll have a greater sense of my own self or feel that my successes are validated in some way. Judging by the nods in the audience, I can tell that I'm not the only one who's guilty of this. And in our conversation today, I want to delve deeper into where this tendency of comparison comes from, how it affects us, and why it's important. Believe it or not, comparison is a learned behavior. Think about it. As kids, we're taught to learn by watching other people. I know I did. I learned how to comb my hair by watching my mom. I learned how to detail a car like no other by watching my dad. I learned how to enjoy endless hours of soap operas by watching my nana. And I learned how to fake cry my way out of situations by watching my older sister. <laughs> On a scale of one to usefulness, the crying definitely takes the cake, but that's neither here nor there. So back on topic. This idea that by comparing ourselves, or excuse me, by learning by observation, this is a theory that was proposed in 1977 by Albert Bandura. It was called the social learning theory. And basically it just said that most human behavior is learned by observing others. Not only this, but did you know that we also have an innate tendency within us to gain accurate self-evaluations by comparing ourselves in order to define who we are and feel validated? This is known as the social comparison theory proposed in 1954 by social psychologist Leon Festinger. Essentially, he said that we as human beings compare ourselves to other people to find out who we are. This tendency to use other people's successes to define our own is inherently problematic. Not only is it illogical, but it also can cause damage to our own sense of self-worth. So how exactly does it affect us? One, it causes our sense of self to frequently fluctuate because our subjects of comparison, which are oftentimes our peers, are constantly changing. Two, it colors our ability to understand who we are because we're constantly trying to validate our own successes based on how everyone else is doing. An example that immediately comes to mind is the movie Bridesmaids. When Kirsten Wiig's character Annie felt horribly about her life in comparison to that of her best friend Lillian, who was getting married and seemingly had it all together. Annie had lost her bakery, she had to live with roommates, and then eventually her mother. And if that wasn't bad enough, the guy she liked initially clearly did not share her same feelings of affection. Many of you might argue that Annie's situation was not ideal. I would agree. But her already damaged sense of self was only magnified when her focus was on her best friend Lillian and comparing her life to her best friend's. Now, we don't just have to look to Hollywood to see this when it's happening in our own backyard. The University of Southern California is filled with some of the brightest students in the country. And on more than one occasion, I found myself trying to validate my own successes and trying to find my own sense of accomplishment based on how I'm doing with my peers. 
It's like one day I'm rating myself on a scale of one to five and the next on a scale from A to Z because my peers are constantly changing. Naturally, over time, this can lead to a damaged sense of accomplishment and a damaged sense of our own self-worth. So, in order to combat this, we need to remember that we cannot define our successes based on other people. Just like I couldn't determine the level of my car's coolness based on who I was sharing the stoplight with. Why? Because there are always going to be too many unknowns and our peers are always going to be changing. And at some point in our lives, if we're honest, we've lacked a sense of satisfaction that can only come from feeling good about what we've done. And this can be for a variety of reasons. Maybe we've studied hard for an exam and we still didn't get the grade that we desired. Or maybe we've turned in countless job applications and have yet to hear back from an interview. In our humanity, these sorts of situations can lead us to think things like, man, am I smart enough if we both study the same amount and she got the better grade? Or what is wrong with me if everyone around me is getting a job or an internship and I can't even land an interview? These are natural tendencies to have and natural thoughts to have, but when we fixate on these too much, it can lead us to not only question our skills and our talents, but also our sense of self-worth. Now, I would love to be able to stand up here and tell you that I've mastered this whole comparison thing. And as soon as I begin to compare myself, I immediately focus on, on my own dreams and my own vision, irrespective of my peers. But let's be honest, that's not my initial reaction. Usually it's frustration, it's anger, it's intense irritation with my peers, even though they have absolutely nothing to do with the problem. So, to combat this, I've developed what I like to call the five minute rule. You know when we were kids, and you'd be eating something really yummy, and then you'd drop some on the floor, and you'd quickly look around, and then you'd say, five second rule, and you'd pick it up and eat it? Oh, okay, just me, just me. But the five minute rule follows a similar idea. Okay, for instance, let's say I just got an exam back. I did fairly well, but my four other group mates did better than I did. To them, I would say, oh, congratulations, you must have studied really hard, you should go out, have a good time. Then I turn, walk away, and the clock starts. I have five minutes to let it all out. Whether this is in the form of verbalizing my frustrations to a peer, whether it's in the form of banging my pillow on my bed, eating a pint of chocolate chip ice cream, really whatever feels good at the moment, I have five minutes to have my self-pity party. But as soon as the clock changes from four minutes and 59 seconds, I not only have to stop that action, but I have to remind myself that my journey is unique to me and that I'll get to where I'm supposed to be as long as I keep my eyes focused on my own road ahead. Because at the end of the day, I want to be able to look back at my life and be proud of all of the things that I accomplished. But that can only come from keeping my eyes focused on my own road. So I want to leave you with this. Comparison is a hard thing to master. I can tell you from personal experience. I've lived it. I know it. But be, just because it's hard doesn't mean it's impossible. So when those feelings of temptation come to compare ourselves, we have to remember and we have to renew our minds around what we know to be true about ourselves. Because then, no matter which stoplights we meet or who we momentarily share them with, we'll feel confident and more content and fulfilled at the fact that we have our own path to travel, that we'll get to our destination wherever that may be, and we'll feel great when we look into our rearview mirror at how far we've come. Thank you.